Welcome to Kutztown University and the Career Development Center, that's um, the unit I'm associated with. This is our second educational event open to the public regarding canine welfare, and we're pleased by your decision to spend this the afternoon with us today. Thank you very much for taking the time to do that. We also share your enthusiasm and passion about dogs. You know, making, uh, the more we all know and share, the better for the doggy world. Uh, making connections and the willingness to learn from each other are all of what it's about today, tomorrow, and in the future. Um, with that said, we have varying philosophies and experiences as to rehoming, training, the overall care of dogs, etc., etc. Uh, one of the ground rules today, aside from having a good time and talking to one another, uh, you know, of any open discussion, if you will, uh, which will follow after Dr. Haas's presentation, is to be respectful of another, others, others' opinions. Okay. Again, we are here because we recognize the valuable reward of learning, especially when it involves our four-legged friends. So, uh, thank you very much. Uh, Dr. Haas is going to commence the program today, and I'm going to let him do his own intro. If you don't mind. And then uh, after his presentation, which is more of a formal presentation, Sue Belanda will speak, okay? But she's going, it's more than an open forum discussion, okay? So it's a Q&A type of thing. Any questions regarding socialization or animal behavior, you can address to Sue Belanda. Sue, can you stand up just for one minute so everybody knows who you are? No. Sue is also a widely recognized author, too. So some of her books are out there for sale. If any of you are interested and you wish to purchase them, you see her um, directly. Okay? Thanks very much. I'll turn it over to you. Okay, thank you. You know, I'm going to see if, if, does my voice project well enough that I don't need this? Yes. Because no. okay. I'll start breaking into song or something. <laughs> <laughs> I have this issue. Hey! <laughs> 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 Because I also have to wield this thing. <laughs> Canine domestication. Um, I'm, I'm going to just assume, usually I ask how many people have a dog. I don't have to ask that here. But I'm going to ask you a question about your dogs. And I'm going to go pretty fast here because we have a, what we're going to talk about today could, could take up a college course easily. Okay? And, you know, you're not going to be here that long. But I want you to just tell me, those of you, everybody here loves a dog, even if you don't happen to own one. I know you do, all right? And tell me what you think, because this is what uh, Brian Hare did as an experiment. If I were to take two cups like this, and let this cotton ball as a food treat, all right? And I put a screen up, and I want each of you to be your dog, okay? Now, I'm going to have this screen up, and I'm going to hide the food tree under one of these cups. Now I'm going to take the screen away, and what I'm going to do is this. You're your dog. You're just looking right at me. I'm going to do this. How many of you, as your dogs, would know that the food tree is under there? Most of you. How many do you think your dog wouldn't know? All right, nobody. Okay, all right, now I'm going to do this. Screen goes off, I hide the food treat again. This time, I'm going to just do this. How many of your dogs would know where the food treat is? Okay, great, everybody. All right, now let's do this. Go back to the other one. Screen goes up. And now I'm just going to do this. And watch my eyes if you can see them. What do you think? Would your dog still know where the treat is? Yeah. Okay. Good. Good. Well, Brian Hare was a uh, was a research scientist at Harvard, and he was hanging out with his major professor one day. And what his professor said, and they were talking about their dogs, and his professor said, "Do you think your dog is able to put himself in your shoes? Do you think he knows what you're thinking?" And Brian Hare said, "Absolutely. I think he does." And his professor said, "Prove it." And so he did, with just simply two paper cups or two plastic cups and a food treat, he produces a paper that gets into science. I think it's like 2002. Science, in case you don't know, is probably the most prestigious scientific journal that is out there. And what he showed is a rather remarkable thing. He called these object choice experiments. And what he found is that dogs perform marvelously well 
when tested by this experiment. Secondly, it doesn't matter whether the dogs are socialized or not. So even if you take puppies or dogs that were never properly socialized or had very little human contact and you perform the same experiment, they do really well. Thirdly, primates and wolves raised by humans, even though they might be tame, don't do very well at this experiment. They don't perform well. And so what are the conclusions? One is that dogs are uniquely proficient at reading human social cues. This proficiency is innate. It's not learned. You don't have to teach it to the dog. They just know it. And dogs' ability surpasses that of other creatures of, creatures of supposedly higher brain wattage like chimpanzees. They are demonstrably, that may be demonstrably more intelligent. Dogs are better than, better than they are at reading human social cues. That didn't take as long as I thought. <laughs> <laughs> I might not have got enough slides. <laughs> you might have to say that. I might have to say. I, <clears throat> my name is Dr. Michael Haas, and the reason I start off this way is because if you don't take anything else, away from today, if you just internalized that particular study, you will have gone away with maybe my main point of the day. That dogs have an innate ability to read human social cues, that they are linked in with us in some absolutely deep way. And that they, and that we share this uniquely pretty much with, with dogs, okay? My name is Dr. Michael Haas. I have a veterinary hospital in Penn Arthur, Pennsylvania. I work with some wonderful people there. Um, I have been in practice for 30 years, and I have gone through my own evolution of thinking about pets. When I started into veterinary practice uh, 30 years ago, I was a large animal practitioner. I was out on the farms. I was treating horses and sheep and goats and pigs and mostly dairy cows and some beef cattle. And I can tell you that my own practices have evolved. In those days, uh, it was snag the calf up by the nose lead, put him around the post, get the horns off of him. Uh, if you needed to do uh, neutering, there wasn't any pain control, boom, you just cut him off. I did things in those days I would never do today. My own thinking has changed completely to the point where now, now the food network that I work in is, as far as I'm concerned, the, the United States uh, food system is, is an absolutely horrible, horrible institution. And I am a proud uh, vegan, uh, and I'll give my wife credit for that. But my, my thinking has changed completely, and my evolution has changed completely. So when we talked about respecting others' points of view, I can very much respect from where anybody has been because I've been there, and I've been, I've, I have taken part in practices that I now absolutely decry, and I'm delighted to say here I am talking to you about animal behavior. And now I also need to tell you that something that a mentor of mine, M. Scott Peck, said when he addressed audiences, unfortunately, I don't know anything. I don't know anything. So now you you know you've taken your Saturday afternoon and you've come out here. Somebody doesn't know anything. Well, before I seem like I'm still with over amount of humility, I will say you don't know anything either. None of us knows anything. We dwell in an entirely mysterious universe. And to me, that's the fun of it. As we seem to get to the bottom of one mystery, it just opens up questions about other mysteries. And that is perhaps, as far as I'm concerned, the beauty of living. So we're going to talk about one mystery today, and that is this mystery of this bond that we share with dogs. And mostly I want to talk about how this guy here, how this guy here became that guy there. Can you see over there? Okay, all right. And that's what and that's what we're going to talk about. Not only in form, but in function, in in the social cues, all of these kinds of things. And what we have to talk about is domestication, because we're talking about the domestication of a particular species. We're talking about a species now called Canis familiaris. And domestication is a phenomenon whereby a wild biological organism is habituated to survive in the company of or by the labor of 